We have a team of reporters tonight that are spanned all over the region. I want to start with Ellison Barber, who is near the Gaza-Israeli border tonight. And Ellison has been reporting for us for several days in this region. Ellison, I know I was spoke, speaking to you earlier tonight. It's been somewhat quiet. But talk to us about the tension, because we know at any moment this ground invasion could start. Right, Tom, it is still quiet, but because of the fact that there is this tension that we have seen hundreds, at least 100 plus military vehicles, tanks, all amassed near the border in different pockets, and we don't have access all the way up close, but we have seen so much activity, movements of military tanks, military vehicles, artillery, military equipment that would be heavy moving equipment, all of it near the border, massive troop presence. All of that is making these moments, these pockets of time where things are a bit quiet, feel very tense and very eerie. Uh, we have heard throughout the evening booms of artillery in the distance. We have seen at different points uh, missiles coming from Israel headed towards Gaza, but that has not happened for hours. Right now, it is relatively quiet. The only noise we have heard in the last 45 minutes is the sound of drones and fighter jets overhead. There is no doubt there is a massive presence here. Israeli troops, Israeli forces, they are poised to launch some sort of ground assault at any minute. They definitely have all of the equipment there. Again, we have seen it firsthand as it has rolled by us, just tanks after tanks over the last few days, full of Israeli troops armed, headed towards Gaza. But for now, it is quiet. We are waiting to see what might happen. There are no civilians in this area. The only things you will see when you drive through this area are checkpoints of Israeli police, Israeli military, and then movements, flatbeds full of military equipment headed towards Gaza. Tom. And Ellison, we were out there earlier tonight, and we saw everywhere you look, there are troops stationed on Israel's border with Gaza. I, I do want to ask you, we know there will be millions of Palestinians that are going to get caught up in the crossfire if they are not allowed to evacuate out of Gaza. But we also know there are several Palestinian Americans, and there are American hostages right now being held by the Hamas terrorists. What is being done to get those Americans out? For the hostages, we heard today from the national, the head of the National Security Council for Israel as he was speaking with reporters in Tel Aviv and was asked about negotiations talks. He said they are not and will not be negotiating with Hamas, that the war cabinet has decided they will launch this escalation of their counteroffensive, that they will attack by We're land, not. by sea, by air. They are not having talks and negotiations to get those hostages out. There are believed to be at least 100 people still being held inside of Gaza by Hamas militants, among them children. There is one family, an Israeli family, that has been missing, all four of them, the parents as well as two children. Those children, they are three years old and nine months old. We were speaking with people in Tel Aviv a couple of days ago, and they had talked at the time about how they were frustrated that they felt like the government wasn't moving quickly enough to have a response to this. They told us, regardless of how they identified politically, that they wanted to see some sort of ground assault into Gaza to get those hostages out, and they wanted to see it days ago. So there is surely frustration. We have heard it, as you were reporting, from the families of those who are still missing, but also from people we have spoken to in Tel Aviv. There was this strong desire to see something happen quickly to try and get those hostages out. As the time passes, you have to imagine that their frustration is growing, waiting to see what may take place. In terms of the American Palestinians inside of Gaza, the State Department has said that they believe they're between 500 to 600 Palestinian Americans inside of Gaza. They have told them to try to get as close as they can to that Rafah crossing, the sole land crossing uh, that doesn't lead into Israeli territory that goes into Egypt. It is not open right now, but they told them to get near it because if it were to open, they believe there would be little notice and that would it would only be open for a short period of time. At various moments today, Tom, we had reporting that the U.S. was talking with Israel, with Egypt and Jordan about that border being open. It did not happen. People are still stuck there waiting. Palestinian Americans, not to mention the massive amount of people, the 1.1 million people that are in the area where the IDF has said they need to evacuate and move south. 
past the Gaza River. It is very difficult to move within Gaza right now, in part, as you mentioned, because they have no fuel. The sole power plant is out of fuel. There are constant attacks. We saw convoys hit on Friday that were carrying civilians headed towards the border. The situation there is dire for everyone, and there aren't a whole lot of answers right now for what will happen next.